uh, women. We had a very great time. And uh, God was saying, it's not going to be a repetition of 2003. 2023, no. God is doing a new thing. Hallelujah. Amen. You will see it and you will know. It will be so fast because of the grace that will make us. I don't want you to leave this service the same. But it will depend on the posture you take this morning. But I pray you will take a posture of opening and allowing God to do what he has to do. Because sin will abound in the world. Wickedness will abound in the world. But for us, the children of God, grace will abound even unto us this morning. God bless you. Pastor, we are happy to be with you this very day. And please help me again. Help me again. Welcome our daddy this morning. Thank you. Amen. Just lift up your hands. You feel to lift up your hand and just begin to thank God for your life, for your family. Bless you, Father. We are reconciled to you, Father Sabaya. Yami ya kasori ya tabare tukili nyeto santi antare takamazonde ria takabare tukili nyeto anta karoto tabazanda anta. Ila paroko temoto kosi wabare. Thank you, Lord. You are wonderful. You are excellent. Mighty God. Ma solo body to Tilinere. Ho kapo shi to the neke tondo ribala. Ola baruko seke de vilukuriba. Let your grace come upon us. Father, in the name of Jesus. Maro to kote ibala. Mora kasaba danderi akibo shandaraba. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you glory, Lord. Akiana. Oh yes, we, we give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are wonderful. You. let your presence be strong. Let your power rest upon us in this place. And let your hand be mighty over our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow. It's good to see to be here Kingdom Pastures. I think this is the first time that name is appearing in front of the chapel. I don't think I've seen Kingdom Pastures anywhere. And that's because a lot of the pastures are in Ghana. And when I was it was during my, my uh, chairmanship, we decided that all the churches should be named pastures. Uh, so, Fantinge Chapel Pastures. What, which city is here? Of course, you haven't yet found your meeting place, so you are, you are using uh, Maryland. But, but it should be a city than that, because when you have so many churches in Maryland, you can't all be Fantinge Chapel. Maryland. I know the pastures will be there, but we want to see the cities so that we know the cities. When you come to Accra, we have over 24 churches now. And, uh, we, and still we use 
the suburbs of Accra. So of Anko, that's where I am. Somebody's at Sakumono. There's another one at uh, Tema. Even, even, even at, uh, what do they call it? Some of the suburbs, they go for another sub-suburb name. Commandos. <laughs> In Adenta Commandos. Uh, so, 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 it's interesting. And we just want to thank God for the life of Pastor Isu the Mumi. Amen. For the anointing that a church that began in a corner in in northern Ghana. In, uh, you see, most of the good big churches in in Ghana started in Accra mm -hmm. and Kumasi and some in Takrade. Uh, but this one, where it began? In the desert. <laughs> and we used to, we used to ask our questions. Can God make rivers in the desert? And we said yes. Yeah. It's in the scriptures. And the river, is, the river is flowing all the way to Maryland. Ah! <laughs> ah! Amen. Yeah. Yesterday I was telling Pastor, Pastor Alex that one of these days we'll do camp meeting yeah. for just Fountain Gate and the pastures. Mm. And I believe that Canada and Co. will all join us. Yeah. But we just want to thank God for the life of Pastor me and his wife and uh, when pastor Alex told me I've been very instrumental in the churches in the US and Canada in fact I I I, I was part of the strong people who believe that churches in Canada and America should come up. and uh, I defended very well Alex starting a church because pastors would have so many friends who were afraid that if pastor Alex starts a church he won't come there and I told them, Pastor, you still can go to any church, but we still should have our own church. <laughs> and uh, it was it was a battle a bit, but finally, Pastor Isud understood me, and then we shifted that way. Pastor Isud is a relationship person. He just loves to keep peace everywhere. So some of those things worry him, but along the line, I told him, Abuchi, you know what Abuchi means? Uh, well, that's how I word for my friend. <laughs> We call ourselves Abuchi. So. And that's because we've been friends for, since 1974. We were in school, secondary school together. Uh, <laughs> and, and a lot of people were not born. We've been friends since 1974. I, I, we're in the, in the senior high school together. But the reason why he, he, he got close to me in that senior high school was because he always wanted to learn ahead of his friends. So I was a year ahead of him. The man would bring me, bring me physics and chemistry and biology and, and add mass or mathematics questions that are beyond his class. And I said, you haven't reached there. He says, I want to know. And so he has been like that, always forward, had, you know. And uh, when I got born again in 1978, after my O-level, he didn't know I was born again because it was after school. And then I went to Saform. And then decided to go and work some more. I went to teach in Obuasi, a city called Obuasi, for two years. Then he also finished and went to Presec. And it was in Presec he got born again. So I was born again in 78. He got born again in 80. And then he went to the university street. And then the following year, I followed. So when I go to the university, he was ahead of me. Wow. Wow. Overtaking. He has overtaken me. <laughs> and the... the, the the interesting thing about the man when I met him at the university was that he had just been born again, mm -hmm. but he had read the Bible several times, read books. He read certain books people don't like to read. There are books by Donald Robin Hill, Why Revival Tarris, and those things. Those were the books he was reading. Uh, A.W. Toza. Those, those, those are books many believers don't like to read because these are books when you read, you'll be on your knees every time confessing your sins. <laughs> every page you finish, you read. <laughs> because when you read Ronald Robin Hill with one revival tariffs, ah, you will confess your sins ten times. But those were the books he read. And by the time I met him at the university, he was far ahead. And uh, in my second year, that was his third year, we we decided to stay together and we're roommates 
for two years. And then he was the president of the University Students Fellowship. I was his secretary. So we, we worked like that until he left. We, st we started founding a chapel in Boliga. I was still at the university, but I was there on the inauguration. There's nothing he was going to do I didn't know. We spoke about it. It was birthed in our room. We prayed together. One day I went to lectures when I came. I saw on our wall, I rebel against the council of hell. He had written and pasted everything, and he was sleeping, so I allowed him to sleep. When he went, I said, what is it? He said he dreamt, and Satan said, Satan was on the loose. He said, this man issued must be stopped. So that was in a dream. So when he got up, he too wrote and pasted the whole room. <laughs> I rebel against the council of hell. And when he told me, we, we, we just prayed, we just prayed, and God has been faithful. Yeah. This morning also, I spoke to the chairman of the church. I know most of you know that Pastor is no more the chairman of the church. I saw on your team, General Overseer, he doesn't like that at all. So you better remove it before he sees it. <laughs> because if he sees this one alone, he will tell you to remove his picture. So, yes, it's good to put the founder and then president of Eastwood and Abba Ministries. Because since he handed over to me, he wanted to make sure that he stays out, but guides the church as a father. Now, you don't see this in most charismatic churches. Founders are still in their churches, even in their old age. So, but he, he feels that the church must move without him, whilst he's part of it. And as a father, he will guide it. Otherwise, one day when he's not there, where would the church be? And you see, that end us a certain strong position in my, our country where people don't consider us, one, us as one-man church. You know, there is a term in Ghana, they call charismatic churches one-man church. They, they believe that the churches belong to the founders. But strangely enough, because of this, they have taken us out of it. Somebody say, how do you know? I go to banks and they don't add me to charismatics. No, no, no. When I go to the banks and I'm dealing with issues, they say we are not part of them. They put us somewhere. That means that they have seen generations take over. Amen. And that, that is how you give longevity to whatever you do. If it is your own business, make sure your children know what to do when you are not there. You know, there are many businesses in Africa that don't last after the founders. And that's because we don't teach them. They sit out there. They don't know what to do. Immediately something happens. They come in. We just lost one of the great business people, personalities in Africa. I don't know how many of you know this Nigerian who started this bank. We just lost him. And, and, and it, it, it worries me because I can say from casual look that Access Bank was becoming one of the strongest banks in Africa. No, no, no. Because when you go in there, the way they do their things. I use their ATM cards and it's faster than any other. Any other thing I see. And so, one of the questions I ask is that, will this business survive? I pray it does. Because we don't know how to give longevity to what we bear. I was in Germany, and our pastor's wife works with Benz, a Mercedes. And he took me to the place, and I started following the years. The first car. I said, what? So it's on. I wish Africans could keep businesses like that. Mm. But you know the way we do it. The way we do it. But I thank God for Pastor Isut yeah. that he has, he has made it. And so the third, the third chairman of the church is Apostle Daniel Asiedu. I don't know whether you have his picture. But yes, yes, yes. So that's Apostle Daniel Asiedu and his wife. He's, he's, he's a, a very, what do they call it? A very unique banker, yeah. very strong banker. Yeah, that's us uh, together. Uh, he, he's, he's, he's in gate pastures. Um, he's in gate pastures. This morning he preached powerfully and, and ministered. So after that, I called him and I told him we are coming here. He says, when he comes to the U.S. next time, he's going to give some three days and then be able to meet the pastors and see what to do. 
because I was telling him you have to come. There are new churches you have to visit. Amen. Amen. But uh, what's the name? Zubi. Zubi. Okay. It's a short form of what? Zubida. 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 I haven't heard that name. But you know, it was sounding like some Arabic name. Were you a Muslim? Yeah, so it sounded like, like a Nordic name. <laughs> I know Zubaila. Zubaila. Zubaila is in. Well, I don't know whether that's why they turn it that way. You know, I, can, I come from a Muslim dominated city, so I grew up with a lot of Muslims. Part of my, my people are Muslims. My, my uncle in Accra, you want to see now, is an allergy mus a Muslim. And we go and sit down for a meeting. And I chair the meeting, praying in Christ. He shouts amen. If he doesn't shout amen, he's in trouble. <laughs> no, no, no. I've, I've silenced them by my lifestyle. They all respect me. What, when I say this, nobody says other thing. But, but uh, we thank God for your life. But you know, when you were talking about grace, you always talk about grace. My wife looked at me because, you know, sometimes as a man of God, the way you know God is leading you is when things are falling in places yeah. like this. The Bible says something, lines will fall in pleasant places unto you. And the truth is that sometimes as men of God, what to preach is a problem. Not because you don't have a message. You don't have a book on grace. Grace for grace. And it's, 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 uh, unfortunately, I don't have copies here, so... Uh, next time when I'm coming, I'm doing reprint of them. I'm, I'm printing more of the copies so when I come. But Grace for Grace is, is, is a book I wrote to talk about another side of grace, which we often don't emphasize. And so when the Lord laid it upon my heart three days ago to speak about grace, I wanted to be very specific which area, because I can't speak the whole book. So, so, so this morning, I really prayed. I, pray, I got up by 11.30 yesterday, and then I prayed through. And then I settled on something. Finding grace to help. Amen. Finding grace to help. You see, traditionally, and, and as believers, we have been told, and we have, we, have, we have read, and we know that grace saves us. Grace saved me. Grace made me. Grace. So grace sustains. Grace makes. Grace saves. Grace finds. But we are not told the other side of grace. And that's, that's all I was emphasizing here. For many years, God taught me that and he helped me so much. And that's because grace doesn't only save you, but it saves you, and it is also there to help you. Amen. We are saved by grace, no doubt, to be helped by grace. So that is the reason why I wrote grace for grace. Because that's what Jesus brought. When Jesus came, he said, the Bible says, he, he brought grace for grace. Um, Sometimes when I want to make it look at this, I say, not just grace, but grace for grace. Amen? Amen? So he brought grace that will save us and grace that will help us. Now, this one grace, but it leads you. It's like grace that leads you into more grace. So the Bible will talk about grow in grace. Have multiple grace. Multiplied grace. More grace. Amen? Amen. So the Bible makes those statements. Let me read Hebrews chapter 4, from the verse 14 to 16, so that give me the King James versions until I ask for the new King James. The King James version is, it says, <clears throat> Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. 
Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So, this is talking about Jesus who has already ascended and is our high priest. He brought us grace to save us. He said ascended is our high priest. And he's talking about to, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the Hebrew believers that let us understand that he is our high priest. But he is seated there, not just doing nothing, but he can feel what we feel here on earth. That means he took a position to be our advocate. First John chapter one, the, the, the chapter two, the verse one says he's our advocate, our lawyer, the one who speaks for us, and he's up there, and he is our father. Now Christian life has its ups and downs. The Christian life has its ups and downs. Sometimes when you are coming to be born again, those years, I know now we don't do that. They will tell you when you come, everything will be fine. Everything will be fine. So when people come to the Lord and after one week they start facing some things, then they say, well, they deceived me. Uh, they told you half truth, not full truth, which is not good. But, but the truth is that the faith has its ups and downs. And when you come as a child of God, you will go through your own path. Even when God has sent you and given you a mandate and has told you that I am with you, still Satan will face you. That is why Satan is the opposer of every good thing. So it's God who has blessed you, God who has chosen you, God who wants to take you there. But Satan, he will oppose you. He will come. The Bible says we are not ignorant of his devices. No, there are people who sometimes want it to look like Satan doesn't even exist. I don't think we should make Satan the key thing in our mind. We shouldn't be talking too much about him. But we should not also be oblivious of his activities around us. Otherwise, so many things spoil around you. And you don't know how they are spoiling. Because there is an enemy who does not want you to get there. The last time I came, I spoke to you about the enemy has done this. You know, when men slept, then the enemy <coughs> did that. There's an enemy. So we have all these things on our pathway. And so when you get born again, even though God is with you, and he has elevated you for a very high thing, and has promised you for a great future, and he's ready to walk with you and get into many things, it doesn't happen like that. One day Jesus told his disciples they should take the ship and go to the other side, and then he went up to the mountain to pray. When they were in the middle of the sea, come on, then the enemy started trying to turn over the boat. It happens to all of us. But God is on your side. You will never go down when God is on your side. That is the faith we have. That is the confidence we have. That is the, the faith we must exercise when we are in God. Don't think there will not be troubles. Troubles may come, but like my wife said, the grace abounds more. So that the grace will keep you. Hallelujah. Amen. So, 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 they were in the, in the boot, in the middle of the night. It was Jesus who said they should go. God asked you to go and do that job. God gave you that mandate to go to that place. It is, you know, sometimes there are believers when they face a little bit of restriction, they say, no, perhaps God is not here. And then they start to do things. See, see, see. Uh, let me. Uh, no, 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 no. Where God sends you, that's where you will meet the devil. Opposition will come when God is the one who says go. Because the devil knows where you are going, things will be good. So, so he will come in. So Jesus sent them, but brother, they face it. Then all of a sudden, when they were in trouble, they went and woke him up. And Jesus came up. And, and he calmed the storms. They said, don't you care that we, we perish? And Jesus came out and calmed the storms. But it tells you that troubles are everywhere. The other thing about our lives is that we all have the weaknesses and the infirmities of our life. We all have. When you are saved, let me tell you something. When you are saved, your spirit is born again by your flesh. You know what we call the flesh? The flesh can pose a lot of problems. It has weaknesses. Now, so we are saved in our spirit, but our, our, our soul is being saved. And our body will be finally saved one day. One day all these troubles will end. All these tears will end. 
But whilst we are here working, God is working on us. The Bible says we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Why? For it is God who is at work in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So God is at work in us. Tell somebody God is at work in me. I want you, listen, don't ever think because you are going through some things, God is not in you. God is at work in you. There are many things you may be facing, but God is working in you. So that is why the scriptures can console you by saying all things work together for the good. Of them that are called according to his purpose and his promise. So if God calls us, there are things that are working, but they will work for our good. Amen. Even when it is an evil thing, God will turn it for your good. Amen. And I prophesy over somebody's life, you are going through a thing, but you will not die in it. You will come out more refined. You will come out better than you were in the name of Jesus. Can I hear somebody shout an amen? amen? So, because of all this, Christ saves us by his grace and still leaves us to walk and to find grace in every aspect of our life. That is why in that scripture it says that they will find grace to help in the time of need. That means, you see, when God was saving me, he saved me. But he knows that I will have some needs. Mm -hmm. There are moments of needs. Mm. There are moments when I need help. Right. There are moments when things will be happening. Mm. And I will need some solutions, some answers, some, some way out. Mm. So what he does is that during those times, I can find grace to help me. Yeah. Now let me show you why this grace is different from the one that saved you. We are all saved by grace. But God knows that my needs are not his needs. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the things that worry me may not be his worry. Mm -hmm. If you look at his tie and his coat and all this, you know that the things that worry me are not his worry. <laughs> That's just to tell you that we are different. <laughs> we are different. That is why it's never right for you to compare yourself with anybody. Mm -hmm. That is the most wicked thing you can do to yourself. Oh. When you look at somebody. And then, no, 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 no. Don't. You are so unique and wonderfully made mm. by God. Your purpose is different. Mm. And it was cut to suit you. Mm. So the kind of challenges you may be having may not be the kind of challenges others will have. Mm. Do you know that the things you have faced and you are living, somebody faced half of it and died. Mm. And you are still alive. Come on, put your hands together. You are still alive. Yeah. You, know, you know, the other day I was telling church, I said, whilst we are on our way to where we are going, let us appreciate God for everything in our life. Let's appreciate God for every moment of our life. Yeah. Yesterday, you wouldn't believe it. Accidents took place. Some people died. Yeah. It was raining and people, but you, you were you not driving too. Yeah. Now, some of the accidents, it was not the, the, the one who, uh, it was not he who went and caused the accident. Yeah. He was going and somebody came. Yeah. And they died. Yeah. But you, yeah. whilst you were going, God said, angels should be on your side and your back and your front and keep you on the highway. For he shall give his angels charge over you that they will bear you up in their hands so that you will not dash your feet against the rock. Somebody, this is your testimony. And so on your way out, on your way up, on your way to wherever you are going, you must learn to appreciate God for such little, little things. Amen. Blessings and honor come when we appreciate God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. But one of the things God does is that in the middle of it, he provides grace. So the grace that saved us leads us into the, the way to have more grace to help us in our various areas of need. Because you see, somebody may be a single mother of seven children. Mm. I spoke to a lady like that. How many children does he even have? Five. A young girl I knew had three girls, and the last one became twin. Bam. Mm. And immediately he got that. The husband died. I said, How did you make it? She said, Pastor, it had not been easy, but the Lord has been faithful. Amen. Today she was supposed to join us in church. 
but she, was, she has not been able to come. She said, it's, 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 it's not easy. But the Lord has been faithful. Then I said, his grace is sufficient for you. Listen, God has some grace that is enmarked sufficiently for you. That is why, listen to me, it is not wise to give up life. I said it's not what? Wise. To give up. Life. Because there is a grace sitting somewhere waiting for you. Amen. That's what I'm talking about finding. Amen. I will show you how to find it. Amen. The problem with many believers, they don't know how to find the grace that will help them. Yeah. Did you notice that in this particular case, now the grace that saved us, none of us found it. The grace found us. Yeah. <laughs> the grace that saved you, I call it the saving grace, it found you. I know sometimes we say, when I found the Lord, you didn't find the Lord. The Lord was not lost. You were lost. <laughs> when did you find the Lord? I didn't find the Lord. The Lord found me. I was lost in the world. I didn't know where I was until he located me and said, Grace, Grace, get this guy out of this mess. And that's how my life was out. So the Grace found us. So Grace that saved us, found us, all of us. How many of you knew about God before you found God? We were doing, we were wallowing in our own ways. Moving on, thinking we were on the right path. Until one day, all of a sudden, he enveloped us with his presence. And grace found us. And grace delivered us. But when grace delivered us, what he said was that, I am delivering you and leaving you into this world. But I am still waiting for you. Anytime you need me, I'll be available for you. You know, you can find grace to help you in the time of your need. And all of us have various needs, various challenges, various problems. Mom, what you need to do is to find that grace. There is too much available grace. The Bible says something in 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 9, verse 8, verse 9. It says, for God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That you having all sufficiency in all things will abound unto good works. God is able to make what? All grace abound towards you. God is able. This grace is supposed to be made available so that you can find it and live your life. Today I pray, somebody will turn a corner of your life. That thing that has withstood you for many years, that thing you have been confused about for many years, that thing which has come and you don't know what to do about it. Today, in the name of the Lord Jesus, may you find grace to overcome it in Jesus' mighty name. Tell somebody there is enough grace for me. I can find it for every situation I'm in. So, God is able to make all grace abound towards you. So after you have been saved, there's a lot of grace abounding towards you. Mm. Second Corinthians chapter 12, the verse 7. Paul, the apostle of grace. Wow. When I started writing this book, in fact, I, I, I read the Bible several times, but I read so many things and I realized Paul was just a unique man of grace. Mm. His teachings about grace, and he says, I'm the apostle of grace. God sent me in his course the dispensation of grace. But when you read the scripture, here is Paul sharing his own testimony of being an apostle and what he was going through. Mm -hmm. Watch it. Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Now, this this Text creates a lot of confusion in theological circle. What does it mean, a thorn in the flesh? A messenger of Satan to buffet me. Now, all it means is that Paul is saying that I had a certain problem. Because of, not because of my sins, but because of the kind of thing I carry. Do you know that you can be carrying some assignment that will give you a lot of challenges? Yes. Some of us think when you are boss, you are free. I'm telling people who are the boss, they carry more problems. <laughs> More problem. As a head pastor of a church, oh, I finished church, my people are gone. I'm thinking about the people who are waiting. Somebody's goofy, somebody's that, somebody's child here, somebody's this, somebody's that. I'm thinking, most of my pastors who are my associates, they have gone to sleep. <laughs> when we finish church, they are off. But I'm now thinking, this woman's son, what should I do? You won't believe it. I have come to U.S. and I'm thinking about 
one of our members' son, who is in school, and I'm sending people to go and find out what is happening to the guy. The last time I saw him, I was not happy about his face. So they should go and find out. I'm here, supposed, supposedly to be resting. You see, in the position God gives you, it has its wahala. You know what wahala is? Most of you don't know, I will tell you. Wahala is troubles. So, so he said, because of the abundance of revelation that was given to me, hey, Satan put his eyes on me. He gave me a turn in the flesh. Now this turn in the flesh, some people believe he was, he was half blind. Some people believe that Paul was half blind. Some people believe that it was some sickness that was in him. Now when you read the, when you read the whole of the New Testament, sometimes you get confused. You want to believe this and you want to believe that. You want to believe that. Can Paul be sick? And then you want to believe that, that. But there are so many things that make people get that. Somebody say, where do you stand? All of the things they say is true. Mm-hmm. I wasn't there. Whatever God has told them, they should say it. But, but, but the truth is that something was going wrong in him. Or something was fighting him for his rule. A messenger of Satan, at least that one we know. That some demon had been sent by Satan to trouble the guy. It could be one of the things that was facing him in his persecutions. It could be that Satan was ahead anywhere he went to. Troubles. That's why that guy suffered a lot. He says five times, five times I was beaten with rod. 39 stripes. Five times. Three times I had shipwreck. I was beaten and left for dead. And when they left me, I got up. So that is why when some Christians were troubled, he said, from henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear the marks of Christ in my body. Yeah. I have suffered this body. Mm. Don't let no man trouble me. Mm. Amen? Amen? So, so the ma- messenger of Satan, listen to me, there are times because of even the position and the things God is doing around you, oh, 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 Satan will stir some confusion. Then, he gone on and said in the verse 8, for this thing, ah, what is that thing? Mm-hmm. I tell people, everybody in life has one thing. Mm. Oh, there is something you call this thing. I do we cry, I me, me Why am I the only person? Why is it that this trouble is always on me? Sometimes it changes form and coming this. Paul called his thing this thing. I don't know your this thing, but I have this my one thing. He said, for this thing. I besought the Lord thrice that he might take it, it might depart from me. You see, Jesus Christ, when he had his this thing, he had to call people and say, let's go to Gethsemane, wait there, go and pray with me. And when they went, they slept and left him. Because there was something that was worrying him. I don't know what is worrying him. You are not in the bad place. You are just in the right place. Some things can come around and give you a lot of headache. But don't give up on life. Hold on to your feet. There is grace you can find that will help you out of it. Every time you get to such situation, I want you to remember Paul. I want you to remember Jesus. I want you to remember Jesus. Remember Paul. Remember Pastor Eastwood. When those things happened to him, how did he take it? How did he go? You think it was easy? Oh, this my friend will be sitting now with his wife and they are looking at each other and crying. And as if, let me tell you something. Those times, I just became the chairman of the church. So anywhere he went to, I went with him. Just to be around them. We'll go and sit down. And what they don't want to hear is what somebody has come up. Not planned. And he's seeing it. One day I remember... We went to a place to start. So we started just about about a month or two when he lost his children. And there was you know the children, Audrey and Amanda. They were both in choreography. We went and sat in a meeting. They were sitting in front. I was sitting here. Before I realized, children came to do choreography. And they said the leader is called Audrey. Hi! It was like a dagger in the heart of mommy. 
So I sat this way and I told Apogee, put your hands around mommy, I beg you. I could look at mommy, he just did this. They are reminding him. Hey. One day we went somewhere. A lady appeared. Resembling what's her name? Uh, uh, Amanda. Look. The picture. The face. Hmm. I said this girl should go away. This girl should go away. This girl should go away. Ask me this girl should. This girl should leave this scene. This girl should leave this scene. Because mommy I said look at the girl. And turned and looked at me. You think it's Amanda? Mm. The girl just walked forward and said, my name is Amanda. I said, I said, God, what is this? Listen. There are times, eh? You go through a situation that you are, if you are not careful, you will cry the whole day. But I came to tell somebody there is a way out. May you find grace out of it to help you. People will wonder why you are going through this and you are like this. You have found grace. Yes. Amen. So he said, for this thing, I besought the Lord thrice. I went to the Lord three times. And you can know, this is Paul. Apostle Paul talking. I went to my knees. Paul is a prayer man. He said, I pray in tongues more than all of you. He prayed. He fasted. Thrice. That it might depart from me. And, and funny enough, there are some things that don't depart. hard as they are, they don't depart mm. until they have finished what they have to do in you. Because mm. sometimes they are there to train you. Mm. They are there to let you know how to defeat this thing once and for all in your life. Mm. I heard a testimony of the Archbishop Benson in the being told by Bishop James Sa, who was his, one of his one of his, uh, 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 what we are calling, men he used to travel with. Bishop James Sai is alive. He can tell us all the testimonies. How they boarded the plane and the plane got lost in the air. They went through some storm. The, the pilots and us, we don't know where we are. We have lost touch with Port Harcourt. We have lost touch with Lagos. We don't know where we are. It also got up. And said, pilot, God has not told me, called me to die in a plane. Come on, find your way out and let's go where we are going. Mm. Immediately he sat down and buckled his seat. The pilot said, We are in touch with Port Harcourt. Ah. He said they got back, they were lost. They down directed them to go back to Lagos. They went to Lagos. They got down. He said, The next plane we are going. So he went to him and told him, Papa, they say the weather is not good. He said, I must defeat this thing once. Mm. We don't travel. I travel every day. If I allow this thing to stop me, it will always appear. I must defeat it now. We are going. Amen. And the next plane, they sat inside. They said, where is it? He said, we are going. Mm. Pilot, let's move. And they landed. When we landed, I said, I have killed it. Mm. It will never appear again. You know what? There are some things that don't just leave. I besought the Lord thrice that it will depart from me. Look at the verse 9. And God said, he, there is God. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for you. Wait here. It's not a grace to save. The grace to help him. You see, we go through various things, but there's grace to help you. The reason why you are not there, you know that sometimes you can be going through some things and everybody is waiting to see how your end will be like. He says she's, she's, she, she serves God. Who is he? And they look at you and you are shining. You are becoming better. And you are becoming good. And they don't understand. That is because some grace has been made available. He says, my grace is sufficient. May you have sufficient grace Amen. to fulfill every purpose of your life. Amen. Whatever the Lord has mandated you to do, may you have sufficient grace to do it. Amen. And I pray for this church, Kingdom Pastures. May God give you the sufficient grace to establish a church in this land. A growing and a marvelous and a beautiful church. A church where men and women will come and be blessed. May God give you the grace and I establish it here. In Jesus mighty name. May your life experience of grace that will take you out of every predicament of life. We cannot stop the problems. But we can find grace to help it. 
Amen? Amen. So he said, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in the, my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So, so God said, this one, I won't take it away. But I have something for you. My grace is sufficient. Have you ever wondered how, how um, Job went through the things he went through? There was enough grace. That turned his end to be far better than his problems. I believe God that God will do something for us that will make us better than the things we battle. Am I talking to somebody? This grace is what is, is cut sufficiently for you to be able to do the things you must do. Every one of us, even the specific thing God has put on you, he must give you specific grace to handle it. Amen. Giftings must have their special graces. So Paul, Paul, Paul wrote again to the Corinthians in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, the verse 10. He says, he, he says, concerning his ministry, look at what he said. According to the grace of God given to me, unto me, as a wise master builder, so, the grace of God has made him a wise master builder. That's why Paul is a master builder. Amen. Now, you know, this is why some, when somebody is doing something, you don't envy. He has grace to do it. You too don't have the grace. If you go and try it, <laughs> if you go and try it, you are, you are just struggling. Because, you see, by the grace of, according to the grace of God, which was given unto me. So, there was this grace given to him. That is why I'm talking about grace for grace. Because, you see, that grace is given to you. We were all saved by grace. But there is another level of grace that is enmarked and cut and sufficiently made available for you. That is how you are living. That's how you are. That's why you are where you are. Never compare yourself with anybody. And no, don't imitate anybody. Many problems people face is that they live where they are being grazed for. To be where they have no grace for. I don't struggle to teach like other people. And don't try it. Find how effective the grace works in you. And you will create an impact. Imitation doesn't take you anywhere. We are used to imitation. I want to be like him. There is nothing wrong with desiring. It is when you are trying to make it yourself. You can design God to give you a grace for. But even the, that grace that will come will make you unique. Because you are special in the hands of God. I pray you will fulfill your purpose in life. Nothing will derail you in the name of Jesus. And I pray that you will find grace to, to, today. By the close of this service, I pray that God will make grace available to you. And you will find it to fulfill your life. Can I hear somebody shout a big amen? amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So he said, according to the grace of God that was given unto me as a wise master builder. Look at what he said. I have laid the foundation and another buildeth on it. That means God made me a wise master builder for foundations. You know, people have asked me several times, how come you are able to do buildings. I have the grace for it. Amen. That's I have the grace for church planting. That's all. I mean, I plant churches easily. I came into Accra alone. Today we have 24 churches. Over 24 churches. We are just about to put about two more churches in Accra. Before I left, I had planted over 30 churches. I have the struggle with it. I don't have the money for it, but I do it. Wow. <laughs> I don't have money for it. Wow. And sometimes when I'm, when I'm going to start a church and I'm talking to him, I say, look, do it this way, do it this way. He said, Pastor, you know, I, I just leave you. Mm -hmm. He will struggle and then he'll come back. Pastor, so this thing, I, I said, I told you from the beginning. Mm -hmm. May you find grace Amen. to be your special self. 
and see God do great things with your life. Come on, lift up your hands and shout amen to that. Amen. Let another one build on it. <laughs> Don't go and try to raise another foundation because I've laid it. If you try to lay another one, it won't work. Even in marriage, sometimes you, you have to allow yourself to operate by your graces. When my wife is around me, I don't struggle with human beings. Because I, I can struggle with human beings. But she has a certain grace when she's there. Ah, things are easy. I love people, but I don't know how to handle them. When there are plenty around me. You will see my heart pure towards you. But as to what next, I don't know. <laughs> but when she's around, I'm okay. <laughs> so when we finish, tell her to be traveling more with me. <laughs> Sometimes the assignment of grandchildren try to interfere. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let me show you another scripture and then I'll emphasize some things. First Corinthians chapter 15. When you, you mentioned First Corinthians chapter 15, and then we're going to talk about the grace, I told my wife, well, she wants me to end there. <laughs> 15, from the verse 10. No, let's start from the verse 8, so that I can show you some. Now, this is Paul talking about his life. He said, and last of all, he was seen of me also. He was talking about people, apost he was justifying the apostolic calling and then talk, talking about people who have seen Christ when Christ rose from the dead. Okay, When Christ rose from the dead, the people who saw him, he mentioned many lists. Peter and Co. saw him, that, that, 500 people saw him, and this, that, 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 that. And then he said, and last of all, he was seen of me also as of, as of one born out of due time, you know, on his way to when he saw Jesus, he said he was seen of me also. As one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles. That I am not meet to be called an apostle. Because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was given with me. <laughs> I'm the least. Last of all, I was the last to see him. But today, I'm one of the first to be talking about him. You see, it is this grace when you find that can take you from last position and put you at the first position. So you see, grace doesn't make you ru 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 what we have to rule out your life. No, no, no. You may be coming from a position that you are last. But when you find enough grace, it will take you to the top. Amen. The, the, there's an, a language in Ghana they call the Akan language. It has this, they say this popularly in, 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 in the language concerning Paul. Paul, I want man term. Oh, okay, a lot of you are. Sometimes I don't want to assume. Paul, I want man term. That's what he said. Go, go back to the eight. I was the last to see him. I was the last person he called. But you see, he gave me grace. And by the grace of God, I am what I am. He said, I labored more than all of them. Yet it was not I laboring, no. It was the grace that was working. Whenever you are doing things and you think you are the one doing it, you miss the grace. You make the grace of God of none effect. You have to understand, grace can help you to do many things. Today, may you find grace to do many things. Amen. Sometimes you want to build. Grace can help you to build. Amen. You want to raise your children. Grace can help you to raise their children. Amen. You want to become somebody. Grace can help you to become that person. May you find enough grace, Amen. sufficient grace to be who you must be. Amen. So, uh, uh, I was the last to see him. Then he, and the, he said, I'm also the least. The least of all the apostles because... I'm not even qualified to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church. Hey, this is where I love grace. You see, we all came to God at different levels of ours, our, our lives. Some of us, the kind of things we did, 
So though we have all been saved, but we know that you. <laughs> That's what he's saying here. We are all apostles, but me, no. Because I, no, no, no. Sometimes you yourself, you sit down and say, there are some of you, you were born in church. So you were good. We the first generation Christians of our family coming from northern Ghana, traditionally known for idolatry and Islam, and becoming the first generation Christian in my house. Oh, I appreciate this grace more. I don't know how I got it. I remember some, some of my tribesmen, the Dagatis, when they met me in the university, the students, they said, where did you learn all these crefe crefe things? Because for a Dagao, if you are even going to church, you should be a Catholic. That's why we are known him. We are good at being Catholics. So they don't understand. They say, ah, you say you are a Dagao? I say, yes. I'm from Goli. No, no, we don't believe. How can, where did you get all these things? They didn't understand that I was a student leader among the Christians. Yeah. And they were Catholics. They, they, so they, when, they, when I meet them, we were talking, I said, no, they can't believe. I should be here. That tells me where I came. I came very far, from far. Somebody said, from far away. From far away. <laughs> so you see, there are people like that in our life. And I'm making this because sometimes some of you, God picked you somewhere. But don't think because of where he picked you, you know, you are a disadvantage. Grace is what gives you the advantage Amen. over other people. Today I pray, may God give you grace that will give you an advantage over something. Amen. Listen, you went into that business. You were, you were seen as one of the lowest persons. But I'm telling you, grace will make you, give you an advantage. They will promote you and take you to a place you never thought you could be. Because of what? The grace of God. Amen. So I was the least. I wasn't qualified to be. There are people who are not qualified, but grace qualified them. I said grace qualified them. Amen. I remember one time my wife and I were in, were in Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam. And Schiphol Airport is quite a long, one of the longest airports. You walk long to the, to the various uh, terminals. Ah, too long. Long. But thank God, sometimes they will tell you from here to here, you need to walk 30 minutes, some 45 minutes. But very long. And we, we, we got to our terminal late because it was not for the flight we took to come and join the flight. This thing came late. We got there late. And the queues were long. And we're going through immigration. Immigration, you can't cut. They start suspecting you. Over there, too, sometimes the whites, when you are telling them that you are late, they just look at your face. If you know you are late, you should have been here early. But it was not our fault. And we have this one plane oh, that is going to Ghana. When you miss it, chin, you have to sleep. So we're rushing to go there. So we got to this place. I said, Lord, you have to do something here. These people, we showed it to somebody. We just do this. So my wife got there. In fact, that day I ran and left her. And then she had to walk and cast her. Precious, let me get to the place, the gate, and tell them you are coming. <laughs> so I got to this immigration. Long! I was standing, she got there, came to me, said, what do we do? I said, I've just showed it to a few people, but the way they are. I said in my head, something must work here. Yeah. All of a sudden, one of the boots was empty. A lady came and sat inside was preparing, set up the computer, everything, and finish. And then one of the workers just came. You know, they keep these lines. Mm -hmm. He came to where I was standing with my wife, opened and said, can you join here ah. first? Ah. Took us from the back, ah. we were number one. Yes. We were standing there, and I turned and looked at the people who refused me. <laughs> they were still in the queue. Listen. God can take you from that place. Yeah. Listen, I want you to know we serve a living God. Amen. When you are going through those challenging moments, don't take any negative action. Pray at least and say, Lord, let me find grace to help me in this position. Let me find grace. Don't fight. Pray. Just say, Lord, help me to find grace. Amen. Amen. So, it's moved on. Give me the verse 10. Let me move. 
but, but by the grace of God, I am what I am today. And his grace which was given unto me was not in vain. Some of us make the grace vain. We don't even use it. You don't recognize it. You don't ask for it. That's where your problem is. That's why I'm teaching you how to find it. Don't make it vain. Grace is available. And it can help you. It's like you're standing by a strong man. And you're trying to lift something you cannot lift. What do you do? Tell him to help you lift it. That's all. That's why the Bible says, go to, go to, go to, uh, uh, let me finish. Go to, uh, what do I call it? Hebrews chapter, chapter 4. Go to the 16th verse. That's why he said, let us therefore what? So, you must come. You must come boldly to the throne. The, this grace is at the throne of grace. Where Jesus is sitting. So you must come to. Learn to go to God. Asking him for grace. For the situations you are going through. Come boldly. Don't come there. It, no, it is meant for you. It is there for you. He took that position because he knows that one day you will be in trouble. So go to him. Learn to go to God in prayer. That's what Paul did. He went to God in prayer. He went to him three times. He prayed. And the Lord said, I'm not going to take it away. And that's because Paul said, can you take it away? Now, I'm going to show you something. He did not say, come there for what you want. But come there for what you need. Good. Let me show you this. The reason why many people don't find grace is that they go packaged. <coughs> Paul said, can you take this thing away? And God said, no, I'm not taking it away. I'd rather have something for you which you need. You see, many times, when you make up your mind about a situation, and there are many times, now, I, I learned this by experience, and I'm teaching you that. There are some things that are happening when you go pray like the way Jesus said, if it is your will, do it for me. But if it's not your will, because you don't know, when you go package with your, what you want, it may not be what you need. How many of you need a, a, a nice car, a good, a good car? <laughs> Somebody said, I want, I like that. Yeah. But how many of you need money to buy the car? Okay. So a car may be your need, but you may not need money. <laughs> you need a car. You say, Lord, give me money to buy a car. Mm. Just tell God, I need a car. Mm. Lord, I need a car. Mm. Why is it, Lord, give me money to get a car? It may not be so. Mm. It could be also the reverse. Mm. That you need a car. You think you need a car. But God looks at it and says, no, it's a want. Because what you need now is a good job. Mm. That will pay you better. Because if I gave you that car now, how are you going to take care of it? The insurance alone. So God says, what you need in my sight is that you need a good job. A well-paid job. So I will give you a well-paid job. When you get that well-paid job, you can get that car. And you can finance it well. So many a times, when we go for great, most of us don't have our need well-defined. We want many things, and we are saying we need it. For my God shall supply all your, my not your wants. We want many things. For example, God gives us many things to create our need without giving us our need. Oh, no, let me say, this. God gives us many things which he thinks we need to create our wants without giving us our wants. This microphone. We used to have corded microphones. Which preachers will be going then you have to jump in. <laughs> so we needed a cordless. God gave the idea to some people. They only took the knowledge they had, which God gave them. He gave them knowledge. They needed knowledge to know that they can change this to this. So he gave them knowledge. Knowledge was what they needed, not a cordless mic. 
They needed the knowledge to transform the corded mic into a cordless mic. Today I pray for somebody. May God give you some knowledge you need to lift yourself and put yourself in a better place. Stand on your feet with me. May God give you some knowledge you need. May some wisdom come to you from today. You will find a way out of your situation. That wisdom will create the things you want in your life. Come on, lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your hands and pray. I pray for you now. God will give you the grace to supercoot him in the, 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 the grace. You will find the grace to establish yourself in wherever you want to establish yourself. Somebody pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lori Aliba de Casayabada. Black Otto Lori Alibi di Bidi Catalaba. Yalema Cosende Lebe Sukalaba Sandar Yali. Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. Boko Shinda Robo di Catabalabali. Grianta Colori Alibi di Condorobo. Yale mano si la maneri yale mino kunde le abali baro. Ile mano mo si akade le bele 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 otori bala bala bali bandori ya. Yala bali baro. Lord, I come. I confess. Bowing here. I find my rest for you I am I fall apart you are the one that guides my heart God is about to guide somebody's heart into something Lord I come I confess bowing here I find my rest for without you I fall apart you are the one that guides my heart Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour, I need you. My one defense, my righteousness, oh. I need you, Lord. I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour, I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, I. Where sin runs deep, your grace is more. Where grace is found, is where you are. Where sin 
rise deep. When we rise deep. Yes, Lord. Your grace is small. Where grace is found is where you are. When where you are.
just concentrate on God. This is a moment of the Holy Ghost. I believe he's here. He will touch you in a unique way. Wherever you stand, we are talking about grace being sufficient for you. I see God cutting grace for individuals. Receive the grace to go out of every situation. That grace will be made available for you. Receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let that grace be sufficient for you. Take it in Jesus' name. Somebody lift up your voice in tongues. Speak it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Let God's hand be exalted over your life. You are never going to be the same again. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody lift your hand. Glorify him. Bless his holy name. Exalt him. Let his name be praised. It is all about you, Lord. 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 It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you. Let your grace be sufficient. Let your grace be sufficient. Let your grace be sufficient. Let your grace. to help in the time of their need. Let them find grace to help. Somebody receive it. I see great deliverance in this meeting. I see a God which God is making a way for you, somebody. God is making way for you. 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 God is making a way out. There is a way out. There is a way out. I feel it. There is a way out. I feel it. There is a way out. I feel it. There is a way out. I feel it there is a way out. I feel it there is a way out. Receive it. There is a way out. There is a way out. Come to me here. Come to me here. Come to me here.
Rita Casella. I don't know, but I feel this. Whilst I was just leading in the song, how I love Jesus. God is bringing you to the place where that will fill your heart. When things happen, sometimes they happen to break me. When God turns his face towards you, it's a new era. I feel all deeply in my heart that this message I'm preaching, you will find grace to make it. You will lift yourself up to another level. Father, bless your word. Surround her with your power. Surround her with your power. Just hold my hand. The power of God. Jesus. Look at me. God knows what to do. He's the only one you need more than ever. Listen, I pray for you. May God heal your heart. And take you to another level of your life. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Touch your daughter. I can see I can tell, and I know it's your grace that all of my days I will sing your praise. I can see, I can tell, and I know it's your
never allow us to be broken down by the enemy. Thank you, Jesus, for what you are to us. Can you come to me, lady? There is a power I'm going to rest upon you. The Lord is good. Osha, can you can you help him from that? Can you help him with that? Oh. Release, release a hand and bring that. Oh. Hey, take it. Lift up your hands and thank God for your life. I feel, listen to me, listen to me. God is telling somebody, thank God for your family. You have been worried, but thank God for the family. Thank God, thank God, don't be worried. Thank God for it. Thank God for your family. You have been worried, but thank God for the family. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody thank God. Bless his holy name. Honor and praise be to you alone. Be exalted in the midst of your people. We commit every home, every family, every husband, every wife, every child into your hands. We pray, Lord, let your favor come upon us. Let your hand be exalted over us. Take us to the next level of our life. We came so that you will heal us and raise us up and make us strong and cause us to live for your glory and for your praise. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you honor. Somebody thank him for your life. Let me tell there is a part of the song that says, My heart is full of gratitude to, to you. To you and, and no one else but you. Because I see only by your grace. Thank you, Jesus, for the giving. Listen, listen. Many things have happened, but God has not given up on you. I just thank God that today you are in this service. Because I believe that what has happened to you is a turning point in your life. You know, I've been ministering in the spirit for many, many, many years. Since I started preaching and leading as a pastor, I minister in the spirit. But I can tell you something unique today. And that's that I felt the presence of the Lord Amen. and had to end the service at where I ended it. Amen. Because somebody's life, lift up your hands and thank him for this man. Thank him that you are part of this. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together and let's take our seats. All right. I will be seated. Good. Now let me let me tell you a few things and then we are out of here. I hear we are supposed to be out of here by 12 30. Yeah, so I'll take you to one. I'll, I'll end before one so that you close at one. Because we are dealing with a hotel. So and you know what a hotel means. Pay as you leave. <laughs> but 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 we just want to thank God for the kingdom pastures. And uh Bless God for your, 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 your life here in, in Maryland. And I believe that through you, many things will be done. Um, one of the things I will tell you is that this is a new church. And the new church must grow through the members. As many as you can invite, that's what you will have. Make room. When we sat here, I looked at it and said, this room, the maximum occupancy is 40 persons. I don't know whether you are even up to 40 more room. Of course, when we have more room, then we need a lot. So there are services. Some of you will receive grace for certain services in this church. For example, I believe that the church is growing and we have to receive various graces. You know, when the Bible says that according to the grace of God, he has gifted everybody. Even that grace is gifted. That's why Paul said, I'm a master builder. Are you what are you? I'm a 
the peace of Christ will not permit. So the grace of God will fall on many people to do many things. Some of us will be the people who will be ushered in this place. Some of us will be the people who will come up and make sure that some things are there. Very soon we'll have somebody who will have to carry the children into a school classroom and teach them. <laughs> you understand what I'm talking about? But most importantly, we have to get our own place. And I was very happy when I heard, you see, I'm supposed to do three days a week, minimum. But we can't do it. So I said, if I go to church, we can't do it when we are doing it in the hotel. Some kind of deliverance plan, when it takes place in the hotel, very soon the hotel will tell you, we don't need you here, we don't need you here tomorrow. <laughs> So, so we need to work at getting our own place. I was very happy to hear Pastor say once every month here, we do a building fund. You are right in the spirit of ministry. Yeah. I think that's one of the graces of a master builder he has got. Every master builder knows how to get what God wants to do. In fact, every pastor is supposed to be a master builder. Because if God gives you a vision, he will tell you how to get it done. If you come to Ghana and you see the building at two thousand, five hundred, five five thousand feet under the ground, you see where it is sitting and the way it is imposing and intimidating. <laughs> but it's sitting on Mount. That's why we call it the Great Pastors. And I'm I'm at the gate of Accra. Before you enter, I'm the one. <laughs> That's why we put the Great Pastors. Of course, when we're praying, we're expecting to see the Lord come down and say, Okay, where, where, where Great Pastor is, here is the place. We pray that God will give you the Great Pastor vision and that you will get the Great Pastor. So we pray that. But, but what I mean is that God will give the pastors wisdom to know what to do for the people. So we are getting there. So all of us who are members must be very committed. First of all, be committed in your life to Christ. Number two, be committed to this ministry. Because we all need a spiritual home. No, no. You, you, can't, you can't be casual about it. Be, be joyful. A lot of Christians are becoming casual. They sit home and they watch. There's nothing wrong with that. You get blessed. But I'm telling you, the Bible did not say that in the last days. He said, we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together in the last days. As Christ coming is getting there. Assembly. There is something about coming together where when you are watching, you don't go out. When you go to when you go to a restaurant and you order fresh food and they bring you a tie of a chicken. It's more expensive than the whole chicken sitting in there. <laughs> it's more expensive. The ambience is added. <laughs> But that, that's it. So we thank God for social media. Mm -hmm. We thank God for online viewers. Mm -hmm. We appreciate them. But if you have the time, make it in church. I believe that Sunday should be a day every member must go to church. Yeah. Carry your children, come. Mm -hmm. And I like the way you people have mixed up with your children mm -hmm. because you don't have it. Let them be here. You see, Jesus says something. He said, you are cleansed by the words that you hear. Yeah. And there's a lot we do, prayer we do, and all that we do, it, it touches our children. So we have to be very committed in that area. Another area we have to be committed is in our giving. And I heard, I heard Pastor talk about that very good. And so I'll give you envelopes for the, when are you doing the next uh, building fund? Next month. At the end of this month. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you envelopes towards that. So I'm going to give you envelopes towards that. So you bring it to me. Give me some anointing oil. If you, if you are just a visitor and uh, today is the only time you've come and you may not be coming, don't worry. Uh, just help. Just help. Yeah, it's okay. Just help this church. So they will put their details on the screen. You can take it and help them anytime. But I'm going to do this in towards this. And I want us to do some, some giving. Father, I lift up these envelopes to you and I ask that, Lord, you will touch it with your very hand. Amen. By this oil, I pray that they are sanctified, separated from any other envelope, just for the purpose of your blessing upon the church. 
in Jesus' mighty name. So here, this end of this month, I want people, I want some people to come and take this. And they are ready to do at the end of this is a special one. They are ready to do at the end of this month just five hundred dollars. You want to bring it. Now, I know when you are doing it in church, it's not like that. But this one is special. At least me, I'm here. And I'm praying over it. So just do five hundred dollars and bring. And I have five people that can do this. This is this is selected. It's it's not it's not for everybody. It's for some people. If you are part of it, you come and collect it. It's at the end of the month. You just want to do it. And I lift it up and I pray over it and I bless it in Jesus' name. All right. First person. Thank you so much. Mom, thank you so much. I need, I need three more people to pick up this. Two more people to take up this. I knew it is for five. It's for five people. If you don't take it, I will do it myself. Because I won't put it down. It's five. Amen. Amen. I know there are people here. Thank you, my sister. Bless you. Precious, you know who she resembles? That's why I said my sister. There are two people who resemble her. Look at uh, in she's Vida. Precious. Oh, she's very yeah. precious. Yeah. Look at somebody like Vida and Diado. Oh, well. One of my <laughs> pastor's wife. You look like that. The last one. The last one. The last one. Okay, Precious, speak this for me. All right. The rest of us who are here, I don't know what you want to do. 100, 200, whatever, at the end of this month, in the giving, get up and come and take it. And I want you to be very, 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 very religious about this. You want to do it and do it with all your heart. Yeah, pick it for that, yeah. You want to do it. The children want their own. When you collect and go, your mom will ask you that. Did you ask permission for me before collecting it? <laughs> One day, Pastor Stuart went somewhere and was raising funds. He lifted up the envelope. By the time he was aware, his son, Angus, had run forward. He didn't even wait to hear how much the man was going to do. He had run forward. And the pastor said, I'm taking 5,000 Ghana CDs from the, by this envelope. When he turned, his son was there. He said, ah, Angus, you are a student. 5,000. You have come to take it to add to you and me and your mom. We have taken two already. You two have come to take He said, I'm praying that God will give you money so that you give me. <laughs> I'm praying that God will give you money so that you give it to me and I put it. <laughs> but but it, it happens. I have a few of them. Somebody take one for your son. You want to do something for your son a challenge. You can do anything, but you want to do something. You want to believe God for something. This is my boy. This is my son. This is my daughter. This is my, this is my business. This is my work. I'm leaving it here. If you are tied to believe that there is some open door you need somewhere, you can pick one of these. Thank you, Father. I give you praise. I honor you. We want to do our offering today. And the offering you want to do, just take up a good offering. Let's bless this work. Let's bless this work. Bless this work with a good offering. Everybody do your offering. Everybody package your offering. Don't sing it out, please. I can see, I can tell, and I know it's your grace of my days. I will sing your praise. See how far he brought me. Is everywhere? How glad you find me. Well. 
I can see, I can tell, and I know it's your grace almighty. Father, we thank you for every offering of your people. We bless it. You said we should not come before you empty handed. And that as we give unto you, you God, who is a faithful God, will cause men to give unto us. Press down, shaking together, running over. Shall you cause men to give unto us? We bless you and honor you. Let this offering be sanctified as we receive it for you. In Jesus' name. Now, those of you who are doing it by the the, the portals on the screen, please, mm. is there. And if, if you took the envelope which I for the monthly thing, you can take note of this so that you can you can get it done in case you are not part of this assembly. Shall we do our offering quickly? Those of you who are doing it cash, come and put it inside. I can see, I can tell, and I know it's your grace on my days. I will sing your praise. Oh, I can see, I can sing, I can tell, and I know it's your grace on my days. I will sing your praise. Oh, I can see. I, I can, can see. see. What? I, I can tell. tell. And I know it's your grace. Oh, my grace. I will sing your praise. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We honor you for the givings of your people. Thank you, your word is true. That you, O oh God, even as we sow, you will bless and take care of us. Let your hand be mighty. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Shall we be seated? Well, my wife and I are happy to be here. Amen. And uh, we just can't wait to see this great church. When you get to your meeting place, immediately you get to your meeting place, you call me. I'll come for three days and, and fly back. I'll come and we open it. I'll just find time and come. I'll fly in, finish, and fly out. Amen. Amen. But I believe, God, that you should get a good place. Amen. And then we'll be able to do meetings together. God bless you so much. Thank you for receiving us. Pastor Kumi and your wife, Monica, we, th we love you so much. God bless you. Amen. Oh, please, let's put our hands together. 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 Come on. Is that all you can do? Come on, let's do. Let's be on our feet. Let's be on our feet. Let's be on our feet. Wow, 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 wow. You may be seated. You may be seated. We have a few minutes and then. Actually, we can stay up to 2 o'clock anyway. Yeah. We don't want people to think that. Yes, we have this place on the 2. Yeah. Normally, our services are from 10 to 12. And we say we're having a guest, so let's do 10 to 12 30. Yeah. But you can testify that you, you wouldn't want this meeting to close. Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't want to close. Yeah. So uh, we thank God uh, for what he has done. Amen. Come on, put your hands together one more time. Amen. Amen. So, Daddy and Mommy. On behalf of, come, my beautiful wife, on behalf of myself and my beautiful wife, amen. By the way, I chose this dress for her this morning. I chose it. <laughs> One of the Sundays, there was no celebration going on. She put on this, she came to church and said, wow. You remember the day when I, I'm like, ah, what are you celebrating? And you, you are looking so... Thanksgiving Sunday, okay. Say, so I ate and I said, This one now that daddy and mommy are coming, please put on this one. That's right, yeah. But on behalf of myself, my wife, and the entire congregation, that we want to say a big thank you, big, big, big thank you. And you wouldn't believe it, I was trusting God that Pastor Alex will visit us for the first time before anybody else comes, and it hasn't happened. You are the first person on a Sunday morning to visit us. First person. And that means a lot to me. That really means a lot to me. Yeah. 
He was supposed to come, I think, a, a, a month ago, and he had to leave for Canada. So we spoke and said, you go ahead. Go ahead. The time will come. And I'm, I'm so excited. And once daddy was ministering, I said, anytime you are coming, three days, we are going to rent a place. <laughs> we are, and maybe that will not happen. We'll get our own place anyway before he comes. Yeah. But we are honored. We are really, really honored. Come on, let's put our hands together. Yeah. And uh, I think you have something to say, right? Okay, I will give it to you and then. Praise the Lord. Wow. I am so blessed today. Cannot pass this woman. Come on, join me. Join me. Let's appreciate our mommy. Come on, the woman. Come on. Kingdom passion. Come on. Daddy, thank you so much for coming. Mommy, we love you so much. We thank you so much. Just a little something from the women of Kingdom Pastures to appreciate you for coming with Daddy. We thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you so much. So, This is this is a, a historic moment, so please make sure you are taking all the pictures. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. 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 Come on, let's put our hands together for the Lord. God is good and all the time. So please let's be reminded of the following announcement. Bethesda is coming. Just as we join in doing receipt, let's make sure we tune in in the mornings and in the evenings, desert desert pastures and also pneumaticos. Make sure you book the hotel. Daddy wants us all to come to that place and camp. He wants it to be like a camp meeting. Yeah, so just take some days off work, book your hotel, and then come. And your life will never be, that I can guarantee you. That I can guarantee you. Anybody who has been to pneumaticos, daddy's meeting, you will never live the same. So let's make time for that. And I know that it's going to be an add-on to us. And they will come back as uh, transformed people. Amen. Amen. And I want to say thank you to uh, two wonderful gentlemen who drove daddy and mommy all the way from Virginia to us. Let's acknowledge them. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. And also to our special guest, we want to say a big thank you. Your presence is a great source of encouragement to us. Anytime we see you, we're excited. Yes, and if you don't have any place of worship, we, we, I'll be glad to be your pastor. I will be glad to, to mentor you, to teach you the word of God, because we are going somewhere. Amen. Yeah. Am I missing anything? That's it. Shall we please be on our feet, and then Daddy will release us. Amen. Amen. Now may the grace our Lord Jesus Christ and his love and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all as you go back to your home. You're going out and you're coming in throughout this week. It's blessed that God will visit you. In Jesus' name, receive grace to help in the time of your need. Amen. We have that's the what I've said. So we we'll take declaration. Yeah. Before I declare, the Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for Thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Go! Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. 
and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shout grace for grace. grace, for grace. Say grace for grace. grace, for, grace. for the last time, grace for grace. grace, for grace. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You may be seated. See you in the next service. Amen.